Today we're going to be talking about how to find the hydrostatic force on the bottom of a tank and the hydrostatic force on one end of the tank. In a previous video I talked about how to find the hydrostatic pressure on the bottom of the tank. We assumed, to find the pressure, we assumed that the density of water was 62.5. We multiplied that by the depth of 3 meters of the tank to get 187.5 pounds per square feet. Now, I talked more about it in the last video, but when we're talking about specifically water, we can assume a density of 62.5. We're going to need that also to find hydrostatic force. If it's a different liquid other than water, anything other than water, you may need to backtrack and use a more complicated pressure formula to find pressure for that type of liquid. But if it's water, you can assume 62.5 and multiply that by depth. In this particular problem, we've been given the tank, which I've drawn here. It's two meters wide, three meters deep, and five meters long, and it is completely filled with water. So I've drawn the water at the top of the tank here. And in this video, we're going to talk about how to find hydrostatic force on the bottom of that tank and hydrostatic force against or on one end of the tank. Now when we talk about hydrostatic force, we're going to use the equation force equals pressure times area, but pressure and area are both related to a specific depth. So what we're going to do for number two to calculate hydrostatic force on the bottom, we're going to use the answer we got for number one because number one tells us hydrostatic pressure on the bottom of the tank. Because we're talking about the bottom of the tank in both cases, we can use the fact that we already calculated pressure. So force on the bottom means pressure on the bottom times the area of the bottom. Well, pressure of the bottom is 187.5. Area on the bottom is two times five, which is 10. So we're gonna say 10 times 187.5 is gonna give us 1875. And the units for that will just be pounds. So that's hydrostatic force on the bottom of the tank. Now for number three, we need to find hydrostatic force on one end of the tank, and that's a little bit trickier because the end of the tank we're talking about is a vertical plate, basically, right? The ends of the tank is a vertical wall as opposed to the bottom of the tank, which is lying flat. And when they mean one end of the tank, they don't mean this three by five area here, 15. They mean one of these ends here, two by three. So this end right here is the end of the tank that we're talking about. Now the tricky part about finding hydrostatic force on a vertical plate like this is that we can't just find force at one level. So for example, in the previous problem, we found force at the bottom. So we found the force, you know, at the bottom here. But in this problem, we need to find the force at the bottom, but we also need to find the force at this level, at this depth, and at this depth, and at the top, because this vertical end here has force applied against it at every depth of this tank, and somehow we need to quantify the force against this entire vertical wall. So the way that we're actually going to do that, we're going to sketch a picture of the end of the tank over here on an xy coordinate plane. Let's pretend that this is the end of the tank here. And this is going to be the top of the tank here, and this is going to be the bottom of the tank here. So we're drawing it exactly as we'd expect to. But the interesting thing about this is that we're going to orient our axes differently. So we're going to call this the x-axis and the y-axis. And this is a good rule of thumb. So the first thing that we want to realize is we want to put the origin of our axes. Whenever we're doing a problem like this, you want to put the origin of your axes at the top of the water level. So in our case, the tank is completely full, right? And the water level comes up to the top of the tank like this. So we want to put the origin at the top of the water level. Sometimes you're dealing with a tank and you say that the tank is three meters deep, but the water is only two meters deep. And so the water level would actually be right here. And in that case, you'd want to put the origin of your axes right there at the top of that water level. So in this case, we're putting it at the top because our tank is full, but we're going to call this zero here. And the reason we flipped the axes was because we want the X axis running down to the bottom of our tank or to the deepest part of the water. So make sure you draw your X axis going down to the bottom of the tank like this. That'll make taking an approximating rectangle in this section a little bit easier and more intuitive because we'll be able to do it in terms of X instead of in terms of Y. So once we've got our axis set up and we've got the origin in the right place, what we want to do 
is draw a typical approximating rectangle. So what that looks like, let's say, is a rectangle like this, and we're gonna use this rectangle, we're gonna find an infinite sum, and then we're gonna turn that into an integral, but we're gonna use this rectangle to approximate the area of this rectangle, and then we'll take the limit as n goes to infinity, and we use an infinite number of rectangles as n gets larger and larger. So this is a typical approximating rectangle. The height of it here we'll basically call delta x, now if the tank is three meters deep, right, we already know that, we know that the depth of the tank is three meters, and if we call this length here x sub i, then we can say that this is at a depth here of three minus x sub i. We also know that the width of the tank, and therefore the width of the rectangle here, is equal to two, because we know here that the width of the tank is two meters. So now we're going to look at finding force against hydrostatic force against this particular rectangle. So force, we know we're going to use our formula up here for force, is pressure times area. So again, we're going to be looking only at this particular rectangle. We're going to put in pressure, which we know, remember, pressure is density times depth. Well, we know that density is 62.5 because we're talking about water. So we have density, we have a depth of three minus x sub i, so three minus x sub i, that's the pressure piece of our force formula. And then we have area. Well, we know that the area is two times delta x because it's two meters wide and it's delta x tall here. So we have two times delta x. Now this is a formula that gives us force against this particular rectangle, but remember that we're not interested in force against this particular rectangle, we're interested in force against the entire end. So the way that we're going to find force against the entire end of the tank is to take an infinite sum with an infinitely large number of rectangles to get the integral. So basically what we're saying is that f is going to be the limit as n goes to infinity of the sum here, i equals 1 to n of the formula that we wrote here. So we have 62.5 times 3 minus x sub i times 2 delta x. Now, of course, when you're taking a sum like this and you're taking an infinitely large number of rectangles, an infinitely large n, this sum here just turns into an integral. So our force is going to be the integral, an infinitely large number of rectangles to approximate this area. Well, we know that the area is from 0 to 3, right? 0 here to a depth of 3 meters, so 0 to 3. And then we just take the integral of our formula that we wrote, 62.5 times 3 minus x sub i times 2, and the delta x just becomes here dx, and this is the integral that we have. So essentially what we've done is we drew a picture, we found a typical approximating rectangle, we just found the width of the rectangle and the height of the rectangle so that we know that its area, width times height, is 2 times delta x, and we multiplied that by the density of water, which we know to be 62.5, times a representation of the depth, which we know to be 3 minus whatever here x sub i is. So we've got an integral, and in fact now this i here, when we write the integral, this i here goes away, and this is the integral that we have to work with. Now this is pretty easy because the 2 times 62.5 is 125. That can come out in front, and we're just left with the integral from 0 to 3 of 3 minus x dx, and we can calculate that easily. So what we'll get is an integral of 3x minus 1 half x squared when we use the power rule. We're going to be evaluating that on the range 0 to 3. So then when we plug in 3, we always plug in our upper limit of integration here, 3. So we'll get 125 times 3 times 3 is 9, minus 3 squared is 9, times 1 half is 9 halves. And then we'll subtract whatever we get when we plug in the bottom number. But of course, when we plug in 0, we'll get 0 and 0 here, so we get 0 minus 0. That whole thing's going to go away. When we do the arithmetic here, we get force equals 125 times 9 halves, because 9 minus 9 halves is just 9 halves. And then when we multiply this out, we get approximately, if we turn it into a decimal, 562 
562.5 pounds, and that is the force against one end of the tank, so we can call that our final answer. So that's how you use this method here of drawing out the picture, finding the formula, taking the sum, and turning that into an integral. That's how we find the force against a vertical plate or one end of our tank. So I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, like this video down below and subscribe to be notified of future videos.